Hi right, guys, how are you doing? I'm Barry from Background Fencing. Um, this video uh, is all about the, the power tools I use within my fencing business. So I think there's about 25 tools to go through, or different types of tool uh, to go through in this video. So the idea is to show you what it is, what I use it for within fencing. Hopefully this is of some interest. To, you know, it could be a DIY or a way to build your own fence, or even a fencing contractor, landscaper, that type of thing. It's always good to see what other people use. Um, if it makes your job easier, more efficient, uh, all the much better for it. So, cheers, guys. So here we have probably one of the most important, if not the most important tools that, uh, that I have is the concrete breaker. So these are all petrol, these three. Um, so, you know, you can use them anywhere. And um, this one in the end is the DeWalt 54 volt uh, SDS Max breaker. This is about half the weight of one of these and it's, it's not as powerful. Um, so I use these for, you know, the, the really hard to move concrete and this for, you know, more intricate sort of work. It's far less tiring using that, so I tend to use that sometimes, you know, if, it's, if it doesn't require the, the brute strength of these. I'll leave links in the description to all the tools I'm going to feature in the video, so you can click on a link. But these are highly recommended, haven't missed a beat, um, just brilliant. So power tool number two, uh, sticking with the, the digging hole theme. Uh, this is the Still BT131 Post Hole Digger. Um, I've actually done another video on this, so if you look at my channel, you'll see I've done a specific video on this machine. Uh, so I have an 8 inch flight there and a 6 inch flight. Um, I tend to use this, the bigger one, most of the time. Tool number three is the reciprocating saw. Um, this is the 54 volt version from DeWalt. Um, I used to have the 18 volt, but just found it wasn't that powerful, so I switched to the flex volt version. And this thing's, you know, tremendous. One of the most important tools uh, that I use as well. Um, I use it in conjunction with these DeWalt Extreme blades. Uh, the reason I use these is because these blades cut through wood and metal, so you can, you know, rip apart old fences, you know, right through the nails, old bolts, whatever, using this. So it's fantastic for deconstructing fences. And it's also great for if you hit a massive tree root in a hole when you're digging a fence post hole, this thing will just chew through the root. So it's perfect for that as well. So again, really valuable tool. I would always recommend the 54 volt. Uh, a lot of my tools are 54 volt just because, you know, they're that bit more powerful. So tool number four is the SDS drills. Uh, so we have the 18 volt here and the 54 volt here. Um, I'll use this most of the time. Um, and these are used for basically drilling into masonry. So when you're fitting gate posts, or you need to fit a fence post or a wall, um, you'll always use an SDS drill with a masonry bit. So I'll use that. Um, this one's used most often for when I'm chipping away at, you know, holes with, with concrete in them. There's just that one little bit of concrete to get and it's so blooming awkward to get them you know with the big breakers over there um i'll quite often use a chisel on this one you get a hand right in the hole and just get the bit that you need you know to get to get to get it out of the way yeah, but obviously obviously doubles up as a scs drill as well so these are must-have tools especially when you're fitting gates you need an scs drill uh, these are the dewalt 18 volt hammer drills um Again, I'll use this. This one usually stays in my workshop uh, with a sauger, but I specifically use that for making gates. So it tends to stay in the area where I make the gates. Um, this one goes out in the van on me all the time, but I specifically use it for pilot holes most of the time. So I tend to keep the drill bits that I use all the time, you know, and it just saves time swapping about. Um, as I say, I don't really use these too often. Um, on the hammer action, I would always use the SDS drills. So next we have the uh, angle grinders, and um, these are five inch angle grinders. This is the 18 volt and this is the 54 volt. This is the flex volt. This thing's excellent. Um, I love this this grinder. The, the trigger on this one's far better than this one. So if you are thinking of getting an angle grinder, always go for the 54 volt, why would? Um, this one goes out in sight with me all the time, where I use it for cutting concrete, you know, metal, uh, you know, nails, whatever. Um, it's just such a handy tool to have. The 18 volt that I have tends to stay in my workshop. Um, 
again for making gates, I use that just for cutting spindles for gate handles. Uh, most of the time, so that stays in a specific area in my workshop. But this thing's awesome. Um, highly recommended. Right next tool is the 18 volt multi tool. Um, these are a must have, um, probably in most industries to be honest. But I'll mostly use this when I'm making gates or fitting gates. You know, it's just a, a great tool for if you need to notch a little bit of material out or, you know, cutting nails even. Uh, just such a versatile tool. You know, you get your cutting attachments, uh, sanding attachments, loads of different attachments. Um, I've actually made a video, a couple of videos on this tool. On its own. I'll put a link up there. It's probably one of my most popular videos. So it just shows you the multitude of uses that this tool has. Okay, next one's the 18 volt uh, jigsaw. I use this the majority of the time. I use this for scribing uh, board, fence boards against walls. And I'll stick a picture in here. Um, that picture there is a recent job where I'd describe around a dry stone wall. So scribe it and then use the jigsaw to, to cut that out. Um, just great for circular little cuts and awkward little cuts. I also I do a lot of gates with uh, arch tops. So the jigsaw is perfect for you know cutting the arches. Um, even on the top of fences, you know if you're arching fences or shaping the top of fences in any way, uh, jigsaw is a tool to have. So. Right, so now we've got this beast. This is a 54 volt, uh, basically concrete cut off saw. So this is quite a large uh, diameter blade. Um, this is used for cutting sort of slabs and the tarmac, concrete, anything like that. But I predominantly use this when I'm when I need to put fence posts in, either on a slabbed area or lock block or you know concrete slab, concrete <coughs> patios or whatever. This is the saw for the job, just to cut out the concrete, and then you can use the the breakers there to break the rest of it out. But this is invaluable as well. Right next to I use a hell of a lot um, is the Milwaukee belt sander. Um, this is one of those tools you think, oh, I don't really need that, but when you get it, um, you know, honestly, I use it all the time. I um, use it a lot for profile on the top of fence posts, or if you're fence at an angle and you've had to cut the top of the slats, I'll use the, the belt sander to get a perfectly flush finish on the, the top of the fence. You know, doing you know, sanding gates, anything like that, but it's just a, a great tool. It's quite a heavy tool, it's quite a big brute, but um, it just removes material so much faster than the orbital sander. And um, we'll come on to that next. Um, but belt sander, I wouldn't say it's a must have tool, but it's a good tool to have. Um, so that brings us on to the orbital sander. And um, this is the DeWalt 18 volt. It's basically a palm sander, so you can just, just fits nicely in your palm. Um, you can see the pads on the front there, there's just Velcro. <clears throat> so you get all the different grits, you know, for all the different pads. Just stick them on with Velcro and then away you go. Um, I predominantly use this for sanding in front of gates. Um, sometimes in small section of fences, I'll, I'll use it to, you know, sand the faces if required or the top of the boards. Even the top of gates, just any like fine sanding sort of work. Um, this is a, a great thing to have. So next, circular saws. Um, this is the 54 volt and this is the 18 volt. Um, I keep the 18 volt in the workshop most of the time. It's just for cutting down uh, lengths when I'm taking them into the workshop. And I'll use this on a daily basis on the van. Um, so it's the 54 volt. The reason I got the flex volt is I had a job in the past where I was ripping down six by two timbers for a deck and this thing just kept cutting out. I actually burnt out about two or three batteries and it kept bogging down, so it prompted me to buy this. Never since getting this, you know, it just, you know, it's just like a corded version, you know, with the 54 volts, just excellent. So I use that all the time. It is quite heavy, but it's just, it's good to have that power. So circular saws, um, really important too as well. But don't really use right, so the next circular saw I own, this is more of a specialized sort of bit of kit. Um, but this is a 40 volt max Makita circular saw. Um, the differentiator with this one is that it cuts through, you know, 100 mil fence posts in one pass, you know. Um, so you can do that with it, or the reason I got it is another reason, which I'll, I'll put a clip in here now. You can see me trimming down um, the top of a fence, a hit and miss fence. So this saw, you can lay it on top of the fence and cut right through, you know, 
one board, the rail and another board at the same time and just trim trim the whole fence in one go. So that's the reason I've got that. But also we're cutting the 4x4 four four posts. So here's a saw with the, the 40 volt max, 5 amp hour battery. Quite big batteries, quite heavy. Um, but I'll put a link in there again. I've done another separate video on this, specifically on this saw and what I use it for. So if you're interested, I'll stick it up there and you can click on that. Yeah, this is a DeWalt 18 volt mini circular saw. So you can basically hold it one handed, you know, and just cut, cut with it. Um, have a lot of control with it. Uh, it's very lightweight and just a handy bit of kit. The reason I've got that specific saw is for a specific, it's a lot of specifics, but a specific type of fence uh, that I do when I'm doing a horizontal ranch style fence, I'll always use this saw because it's just so much easier to cut vertically, you know, cut the slats vertically. Okay, so next is the chainsaws. Uh, I use the Still, this is my favourite saw here, which is a Still MS-170. And then I've got the MS-181, it's just slightly heavier duty. So if I'm cutting down like larger trees or anything that are in the road, I'll use that one. But this one's kept, you know, solely for cutting the top of fence posts. Um, and I've got the chain sharpener there, I'll sharpen the chain with this uh, device here. So pretty much after every outing, you can just give it a quick sharpen with this and it's good to go. But this thing's been really reliable, really good. Um, I used to run the DeWalt's, I used to have an 18 volt chainsaw and a 54 volt one, but I just couldn't get on with them. Uh, the 18 volt was just underpowered to me and the 54 volt, anybody that's watched my channel, you see I had problems with that, so I just got rid of it in the end. So, but still never seemed to let me down, so just stick with those. Next one's the DeWalt plane. I use this one for probably planing inside of gates or I'm basically plane and timber, you know, if you need to take a few mil off. Yeah, it's usually quicker to do so with the plane. So it's always handy to have that. Right, on to probably one of the most used and most important tools um, that I own, which is the impact drivers. So we've got a selection of DeWalt here and Milwaukee. Um, in my opinion, the Milwaukee drivers are better. They're smoother and more powerful than the DeWalt's. But because I'm on the DeWalt battery platform, I tend to have a few of those kicking around. So this is a fairly recent one, this is an M12, so it's only a 12 volt. Um, the reason I bought that is it's a lot lighter um, than the, the 18 volt Milwaukee. So that's kind of the one I use all the time now uh, in my van. And <clears throat> the 18 volt, I just keep that specifically for fitting fence rails. So this is in here all the time. So. That's all I use for fitting fence rails and driving, you know, long coat screws through the rails or landscaping screws when you're doing sleepers or whatever. And um, this is another M12, which stays in the workshop. There's a 10.8 volt uh, DeWalt, which tends to stay in my work bag. And these are just 18 volt DeWalts that are scattered around. Usually one in the van, a couple in the workshop. But this is a just a must have tool for any fencing contractor. Here we have one of my most favourite tools, which is the Makita 36 volt track saw. If anybody's not seen one of these, you basically lay the track where you want to cut, place the saw on the thing and follow the track and it just cuts. Um, I use this specifically for cutting fence slats, usually. Um, instead of using a circular saw with a guide, um, when you're ripping fence slats, if you've got a slat with a slight angle on it, uh, you can just place the track on the angle and rip right up. You know, it's a lot quicker, a lot more efficient. It's just the best tool for the job, in my opinion. So this is a great tool. Um, also use this for trimming the bottom of gates, yeah, the side of gates, um, the top of fences. It's just such a versatile tool. But brilliant tool to have. Right, you can't be a fence company without nail guns. So in my case, I've got five here. Uh, so the main everyday nail gun that I use is the Pazload X 360XI. And it's just so good. Um, that I had to buy a second one when it came up on a deal. That's just used as a backup. Um, this is the three, is it the IM three fifty pass load? I don't like that one as much, but it's still, it's still okay. But I'm, I'm just a convert to the three sixty XI. So these are my two main guns here. I also have a Dewalt eighteen volt uh, nail gun, which just serves as a backup. So if I ever run out of gas or these start mucking up, you've always got the DeWalt in the van, you know, you just pick up and start start using. But it's like so heavy, you don't like using that. Um, it's just cumbersome, slow, heavy. 
just not my favourite, you know, when you're used to these, they're just so powerful and fast, you know. And then I also have a second fixed nailer here, which is usually used in the workshop when I'm pinning uh, matchboard onto the front of gates. So gluing and pinning the matchboard or tongue and groove onto gate frames, that's when that will be used. So that's it, selection of nail guns. Uh, for anybody that's interested, I've done a few videos on the pass load versus DeWalt or pass load versus pass load. Uh, if you look through my channel, you'll see some of those videos and you'll see the, the differences between the, the nail guns. Right, so onto the miter saws now. Um, this is what I would call a, a sight miter saw. So it's quite a small, a seven and a half inch miter saw. Flex volt, uh, 54 volt. Um, this is just very, very portable. Um, so I love this saw. Uh, it's, it's great just to carry on to the job site with you. Um, and predominantly I'll use that for when I'm putting capping on the top of fences. Uh, you have to, you know, miter the joints or if I am doing decking, which is pretty rare, um, I'll use that for mitering the boards. Um, or even just cutting in general, if you just want square cuts quickly. If you have multiple cuts to do, this is great to have with you. Um, and I've got the quick release clamps on the bottom, so you can take your miter saw stand, which I have under there, take that with you, and then this just clips on the top, and then you're away to go. Good to go, sorry. Right, sticking with miter saws, this is my Makita 12 inch miter saw, which is in my workshop, so this never moves, this always stays in the workshop, and this is predominantly for making gates. So I've got a specific bench made up for that, so I've got a miter station made up. Uh, cluttered with all these tools at the moment, but you can see what I mean, and it's got the the Craig track system along there as well. So basically you can do multiple cuts, take your measurements, you know, if you're wanting 600 mil bits of timber, move, move this to 600, lock it off, and then just, there's your stop. So it's just, that's really handy to have. Um, so that's the Makita miter saw. It's a beast, I love that saw. Um, I used to have the DeWalt, I still do have it. But the reason I changed to this was because of the forward rail system. This saw doesn't take up as much room in the workshop because all the movement's forward instead of back. Uh, the DeWalt's got the backward rail system. So if I had the DeWalt in here, this bench would have to be you know, out to here, which I'll show you in a second. So that's the reason I've got the Makita in there. So a great circular saw for building gates. Right, so here we've got the DeWalt 12 inch miter saw. This is a DWS 780. And this is my workshop just now as well. And what I love about this saw is it's got the shadow lines opposed to the laser. So this saw is far more accurate than the Makita. Or should I say, it's, it's far easier to get accurate accurate than the Makita. So whenever I'm doing a gate with, you know, intricate bracing that has to fit, you know, be millimeter perfect. I'll always use the DeWalt saw to cut the bracers as opposed to the Makita. I just find it far easier, you know, with the, with the shadow line. Uh, so that's the reason I've still got that. But this is a great saw. I just wish the Makita would have the shadow line as opposed to the laser, but hey ho. Right, next tool, this is in my workshop. This is the DeWalt table saw. So this stays permanently in this table that I built round the saw. So just forget all these tools, this is just for making that video, but normally this would be clear and this table just acts as a, you know, a, a runoff table. So this is, this is brilliant, this thing, just for, you know, ripping down any sort of timbers to any size. Usually when I'm making gates, I'll be using this. <coughs> and I've got this hooked up to, it's hooked up to the Festool extraction system, so Festool MIDI. So I've got one there, and I, I forgot to say, with the Makita I saw, I've also got another one hooked up here. So basically what these do is when you're cutting, it's, you know, extracting all the dust into there. So that's a table saw. As I said, that's permanently in my workshop. So we've got a mini blower here, which originally I bought for just blowing down, you know, my machinery in the workshop. So I bought that just for if you can see these sort of areas here, blowing down the dust. Um, but I do actually take this out in sight with me and use it more than this. 
because it's just perfect for, um, you know, if you're on site for any length of time and you're cutting stuff outside, you do tend to get a lot of sawdust, you know, so this is what you'll use just to tidy the area before you go home at night. This is the 18 volt version and this is the 54 volt version, which is crazy powerful, you know. Um, when you use this, you'll wake up the whole neighborhood, you know, it's just loud as anything, really powerful. So if you are thinking of getting a little blower for your, your work site, I would recommend the, this, the 18 volt as opposed to that. Unless you're a commercial, you know, landscaper or gardener type of thing, you would use this or still or whatever, but this is the one I stick with. Okay, so the next one's a quarter inch trim router. Uh, you'll notice this is just a Ryobi. I've had this for years, but it, it serves its purpose, so there's no point in changing it really. It'll be used for usually gates. Uh, when I'm running around the edge of gates, I'll use a round over bit. Like that, if you can see that, that rounds over the wood nicely. A little trim router, good little thing to have. Uh, I also have a half inch router, which is the trend router. It's a lot bigger, uh, but I don't really use that much. Um, and it's not it's not cordless, it's not portable. So it's it's kind of based in the workshop all the time. It's actually, it's under there, but I can't be bothered digging it out. <laughs> There's no point showing you it. Uh, so that's that, that's the router. Right, these are not construction related, but these are so important. This one specifically, uh, this is basically a battery booster. So if your battery goes flat in your van, plug that in, switch it on and you can start your van. Now I need that more times than I care to remember, you know, just because usually when I'm working out of the van, all the light, the interior lights are still on, the doors are open, you know, the battery, it's quite often runs flat, you know, during the day, especially in the winter time. So the amount of times I've had to use this is unreal. If I never had that, it'd be a nightmare, you know, I'd have to go and get a jump start from, from somebody or whatever. So if you don't have one of these, honestly, they're well worth getting. Uh, I'll leave links in the description to this and everything else I've featured. But this is fantastic for, you know, I've got a 2.2 litre van and it starts it no problem. Uh, the other charger I've got here, it's basically just for your phone or, in my case, vape. <laughs> you can just charge that off your DeWalt batteries. And that's right, so all this kit, you obviously need the chargers. So because most of my tools are DeWalt, I've got the, the big bank here. So there's five ports there, uh, a couple of Nikitas and Milwaukee. I've also got chargers at the other side of the workshop. So on this side, we've got more Milwaukee. This is the rapid charger, pass load charger, and this is the, the DeWalt for the 10.8 volt batteries. Yeah.